Natural Fracture the Reservoirs. In the following presentation we are going to discuss about the naturally fractured reservoirs. Having spent a lot of time struggling with these very challenging reservoirs, I feel myself as a kind of veteran rather than an expert and I have the target with this presentation to discuss, or better argue, about naturally fractured reservoirs, to share shortly some ideas and give suggestions to trainee on how to face the study of these reservoirs. Let's start with uh, a short introduction. Despite more than 35 years spent in the oil and gas industry, working as a reservoir geologist in different geological contexts, ranging from uh, Italy to the North Africa to the Middle East to the Precaspian Basin of Kazakhstan, to the North Sea, and to Venezuela, dealing mainly with very large fractured carbonate reservoirs, I see the characterization of a naturally fractured reservoir as a very intimidating and challenging task. So the expression to argue seems to me the most appropriate to describe the different challenging issues we have to face when we undertake the study of a fractured reservoir. Naturally fractured reservoirs contain a significant share of the world's hydrocarbon resources, but they present some of the most daunting challenges the energy industry must cope with. The rock matrix is generally responsible for the storage capacity of these reservoirs, but the existing fractures across a wide range of length scales define the characteristics of the hydraulic connectivity, being their permeability higher than that of the rock matrix. Therefore, the flow in the reservoir is greatly affected by the fractured network. However, no single way to model and characterize a fractured reservoir exists and there are different visions and approaches on how to deal with them. Our ability to predict the reservoir production performance of a fractured reservoir before the field is brought on stream is very often fanciful and visionary. In fact, the granularity of the data generally available makes our knowledge totally inadequate to make both a reliable reconstruction of the fracture network and its characterization. This is because of the intrinsic characteristic of the fracture network that is very discrete and discontinuous, exacerbating the shortage of the available data. Just looking at this horizontal outcrop, we can recognize the presence of different fracture sets. Two sets are perpendicular to each other, one and two, and both are gener generally closed because affected by the white cement in filling, while the other two fractures set, one parallel and one oblique to the other two, are open, not cemented events. The former two sets are likely to represent permeability baffles to the flow, while the later two are likely to increase the permeability and anisotropy of the rock matrix. However, the actual characteristics in terms of flow behavior of this rock is defined by the interplay of these different fractures at larger scale. Now, let's envisage to drill and core free wells at a very short distance. We can understand how the data collected from these very close vertical wells can be very different, inadequate, misleading, unable to capture the actual complexity. Considering the rock volume investigated by these vertical wells, we can realize how the data collected are bound to be different, despite the very short distance, and inadequate to have a real picture. In case of the well located in the fracture interspace that exceeds the well diameter, and not fractured rock scenarios would be inferred. 
A pessimistic scenario would be instead inferred by the well just located one meter apart and intersecting the cemented fracture sets, or an optimistic scenario by the wells intersecting just the open fracture sets. But the real impact of these fractures on the rock permeability is related to the interplay between these fractures that is likely controlled at larger scale by the cemented fractures stopping the continuity of the open fractures. So the message is that only after the field production start up and the record of a significant production history, a significant volume of the reservoir will be investigated and the calibration of the role of the fractures could be performed to optimize, tune the initial interpretation that is just an initial guess. Only with this additional data, at a larger scale, a reliable description and characterization of the fracture network can be performed. So, the awareness of both the poor knowledge of the fracture network as inferred from well data and the need of a calibration with dynamic data, it looks an important starting point when we face the study of a fractured reservoir. As a matter of fact, this kind of study is very challenging and affected by a level of uncertainty that is by far larger than that faced in the not fractured reservoir. Unfortunately, no simple recipes or consolidated workflows exist and this kind of study must be faced with common sense and pragmatism, coupled with the creativity to cope with the shortage of information. From one side it called for guessing, imagination and magical creativity and from the other side it called for practical knowledge, pragmatic attitude and experience. The presentations can be subdivided in three groups. The first group of presentations try to make a general introduction to the subject and includes these topics the definition of a naturally fractured reservoir, a geological overview of the fractures and the classification of the fractured reservoir. We describe then how a naturally fractured reservoir can be recognized. The second group focuses on the geomodeling and different subjects are discussed, the modeling of both the fracture intensity and orientation, the petrophysical characterization. This part includes also some insight about some more challenging subject. In the third part, we move to the a quick overview, from the geologist's perspective, of the different approaches utilized for the flow simulation, and include the subject here listed, single medium, dual media, and the new frontiers. The discussion will be concluded by some final, let's say, common sense consideration and some observation made in a kind of virtual field trip mainly targeting people without a geological background, not familiar with the rock outcrops. <laughs>